Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Modern Web Podcast. I am your host, Rob O'Sell. I'm an architect at This Thought Labs. Joining me today as my co-host is Tracy Lee, CEO of This Thought Labs. Tracy, how are you doing? Yeah, thanks for hosting. <laughs> yeah, we never get to do these together. We usually host on opposite sides of this podcast. So this is like a blast from the past for, for longtime fans of the podcast. Um, today, we are extremely excited to be talking about the journey from being a mid-level engineer to becoming a senior level engineer, and just put as simply as we can come up with it, how? How do we do this? What does it look like? Um, and we are very pleased to be joined today by Christina Yu. Christina is a software engineer at Citadel, one of the largest hedge funds, and used to work at PayPal. Christina, how are you doing? Welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm a yeah, long great. listener of your podcast. <laughs> We're so excited that you could be here. But uh, before we dive into the journey, moving from a mid-level uh, developer to a senior developer, first, we're going to do a message from one of our sponsors. So this podcast, we are pleased to be sponsored by Kendo React. Kendo React is a professional UI and data visualization component library. Designed and built from the ground up specifically for React, Kendo React can augment any existing UI stack. Its 80 plus feature rich components and advanced functionality make it the perfect suite to standardize on and remove much of the complexity of working with multiple UI solutions. So thank you, Kendo, for, for yeah. that. And, and also now thank let's... you for the nice shirt, by the way. I love the shirt. I swear to God, like these are some of the most comfortable shirts. So I don't know how you can get one of these shirts from Kendo React, but maybe if you like start using their products and tweet at them and request a shirt. <laughs> That might be the best way. <laughs> but seriously, let me tell you, these shirts are really, really good. So For the audio listeners, it's a very beautiful yeah. shirt. That's, yeah. that's uh, there you go. <laughs> you, can, you can reach out to Tracy on Twitter and, and ask for a picture of her shirt. Yes. All right. So we're talking about the journey from mid-level engineers to senior engineers. And as I said, we are pleased to be joined by Christina Yu, uh, a software engineer at Citadel. So Christina, just to uh, start out, can you kind of introduce a little bit about you know, kind of who you are, kind of your journey as a developer and how you got to where you are today? Hi. So um, I started um, doing web development in high school, just dabbling. Um, I studied economics in college, didn't think about it as a profession until I did my own startup in 2015. It was a logistics and escrow payment startup called Shippa. I worked on it for two years. And from then I decided that my passion was in building things and engineering seemed like a perfect fit. Then I joined PayPal as a software engineer where I was promoted to um, software engineer two. And um, I was there for roughly two years before joining Citadel in that NXT Mixed program. It's a experienced hire program for developers with one to six years of experience that um, brings you on an accelerated career track giving you opportunities for um, exposure to um, like higher level executives like the CTO, COO, um, a lot of opportunities for training and ownership. Awesome, that's really exciting. So, you know, I, I think that the question of what is the difference between mid-level and senior engineers is really a fascinating one. And it's doubly fascinating in web development because it's such a younger profession compared to many other professions. And so as an elder statesman, I remember when I first started doing development like 13 years ago that they always had these like milestones. It was never based on like what you knew. It was based on how long you had worked. So it was like, oh, I got to put in my three years or five years so I can be a mid and I need to put in my 10 years so I can be a senior. And that was like the, the rules that everything marched by. And nowadays, um, I don't think kind of anybody has those opinions anymore. So I guess to start to calibrate, like, Christina, when you think about like a mid-level engineer or a senior engineer, or at least just your conception of them, what are some of the things that come to your mind? Like, what do you see or how do you currently understand that difference? So um, given my experience working at PayPal, a large tech company, there seems to be very many levels um, defined in a rubric. If you go on websites like levels.fyi, this is often calibrated across top tech companies. So um, on certain forums, you would see software engineers discuss like, oh, you know, you're at E5 or L4 at certain companies. This roughly correlates to a rubric of 
um, as you ascend and become more senior and get higher level, your scope of work seems to increase your, um, you know, the ownership you have. And then there's also the technical skill versus non-technical skill component, where on the technical side, you should be making a greater impact and um, doing a lot of tests to ensure quality. But on the non-technical side, it seems like um, people are looking for leadership skills, um, how you communicate, and uh, whether you're providing mentorship. So yeah, that's just actually kind of interesting to hear you say that. And I totally agree with you. I feel like women, especially women who kind of go through career changes, right, are always kind of looked at as, oh, they're really great communicators. They should become managers. And then all of a sudden they're managers, which, you know, you can kind of consider a promotion, but like, what about senior, right? So I feel like, I feel like a lot of women who do those career transitions actually kind of already have that pre-baked leadership built in just because, you know, they're, they're, they're a little bit further along maturity wise in their careers, but then they're still mid from like a technical level. Right. And then like, what does that even mean? So have you been, uh, have you been um, asked to become a manager before Christina? I've certainly been given opportunities to um, go into a more management type of route instead of mm -hmm. um, growing as an IC, which is currently what I'm looking to do because I absolutely love to code. Um, and I've also noticed that coming from certain environments, like running your own startup, it's really hard to calibrate or even joining a startup with five people, you can often become senior within months or, you know, within one or two years. Um, or like, if, yes, a few months is so probably <laughs> accurate. <laughs> yeah. Welcome um, to your new CTO position, junior developer. <laughs> you're the only developer, so I guess you're the CTO. Um, and, and my current company, um, and I understand this is the case for certain hedge funds and Netflix, there's only one level as well. So um, the great thing about that is um, you're not bound by title. Everybody has one title. You're not constantly looking at a rubric, checking off boxes, I have to do this and that. But on the other hand, um, I think it's important to understand all, you know, the makings of a senior engineer so you can um, um, basically work on your growth to make sure you're getting the skills necessary to um, develop in your career. Yeah, it's, it's a really good point. And honestly, like, I mean, we joke and laugh about that whole pay junior engineer, congratulations, you're the CTO. That's a real thing. I've, I have good friends who are good developers that also had that path. I know people that are not good developers who went that through that path. And that's, I think that's one of the hardest things to explain to people is that there is a journey from mid to senior in, in what you could call the pure sense in your actual skill set in what might be the purest or most objective form of that measurement. But yet there's another side, which is almost more political or more uh, ambitious. It's, it's kind of how you play the titles game. And, you know, you kind of have to play on both levels, but it is definitely true that there are people that at certain companies, they're architects, they're directors of engineering. But if they went to another company, I mean, I won't name names, but if they went to some other really large company full of very talented people, now they're just a mid-level, you know, one of those ranks of developers somewhere in the middle, right? And it's not because they're not worthy of that title. It's to say that there is an aspect of our careers which is subjective to the company we're in. And what is senior is what a team needs on that team to be senior, not necessarily, they don't need a universal senior. And I think that's, that is a challenging thing to explain to people when they see their friend is a senior at this company and they're, and they're like, but I'm not, I feel like I know as much as them. And it's like, yeah, they may or may not be if they were here and you may or may not be if you were where they were. For sure. I think it's yeah. also kind of interesting to look at, um, you know, code exercises as well, right? So at this dot, we, we interview a ton of people and we try to be as unbiased as possible when it comes to actually reviewing code exercises. And so, you know, sometimes, you know, like we had this one, uh, you know, female engineer and she, 
she's actually a junior. She identified as a junior. She doesn't have a lot of experience, you know, um, she's under 20 and, um, you know, her code was like low senior. And we were like, wow, that's really cool. But again, it's like her code might be low senior for one specific project, but maybe she doesn't have all the other stuff that she needs to be considered like a senior from a broad, you know, from an actual senior perspective of what we consider a senior. So, yeah, I think it really, it's, it, it, I think also it's like, do you want to be big fish in little pond? Or do you want to be a little fish in the big pond? I always prefer the little fish in the big pond because you can, you always have people you can like look up to, right? You're like you're not the best necessarily. For sure. And sometimes when you work in teams with very talented people, you do feel that, oh, you know, roughly speaking, this person does know a lot more than me on these certain topics. So relative to me, they are more senior. Um, and often, you know, while uh, Rob talked about how um, previously a lot of people measured experience like, oh, if you haven't reached a five-year mark, there's no way you're senior. But nowadays at a lot of um, tech companies, it seems that um, some engineers are getting senior titles as early as like two, three years out of school. Oh, this happens. This happens a lot. I mean, we get applications in and we're like, you've been developing for a year and you have a senior title now that's like awesome, yeah, yeah. but also probably not, you know, it lo you level set, right? You level set depending on where you are at. Yes, I've seen a resume with um, a year and a half of experience and they're a staff level engineer. Yeah. And that's not to say that there aren't savants, that there aren't just amazingly talented people that deserve that thing, but you know, there's a really great article by uh, Charity Majors, Mipsy Tipsy on, on Twitter, that talks about uh, title inflation and just sort of the true nature of the different engineering levels. And such a good article. Uh, would definitely recommend it. Maybe we'll put it in the, the show notes for people to, to read it themselves if they haven't. But, you know, it's really funny. Tracy talked about with code exercises with people that project as seniors. And these people can be very talented. They can know exactly how say React works and how to build a website with the latest and the greatest. And they might blow your mind. They might even be deeply knowledgeable about tech in a way that nobody else is. But yet there is something to be spoken of. Really one of the biggest steps to becoming a senior is to gain wisdom. It's to have tried, to have succeeded, to have failed, to have learned. That wisdom can't be faked. It can't be sped up. It just is the cumulative effect of all of the battle scars that you have. And so as a general rule, those people that are too quickly promoted, what you'll find is when they get off the track of the things they know, they may or may not have the toolkit necessary to get back on track. And, you know, it, it's not demeaning. I mean, if somebody can do it, great, but that's, that's usually what you'll tend to see with people that get promoted too early is that it's like, oh, hey, wow, you can code fast. But as soon as you get thrown a curveball or something's a little irregular, suddenly it's like, oh no, like what do I do here? And what those individuals might lack is, oh yeah, I remember doing this in another similar way on this other project once. We need to start thinking about this. We need to start solving this. And a lot of that you just get by failing, succeeding and failing many, many times. So I guess the question really is like, are you, you know, when people say, how do you go from mid to senior? Is it the vanity thing of, I mean, I say vanity, but it's also not vanity, right? But it's like, do you want the title for the title or do you just want to be the best engineer there is, right? Because being the best engineer there is, it doesn't matter what your title is, right? Like you can go, let's say, work at Netflix as a senior software engineer and all of a sudden become like the god of the internet, you know, or what, you know, whatever it is. Right. And, you know, you, you know, maybe, maybe that also means that at Google, you know, maybe you're only an IC6, right? Like, so it's so, I mean, so Christina, like, what do you think? Like, do you think the title matters more or do you think like, it's just like the technical know-how matters more? For me, I think, you know, with every company having their ladders built so differently, 
titles don't mean too much. And like even the leveling, uh, what does it mean to be, you know, software engineer three? Um, that really depends on different companies. Um, I would say that no company is alike in the qualities they're looking for as well. But generally, I'm hoping to grow as a software engineer so I can make a bigger impact um, on the people around me um, and like be more productive in coding, write higher quality code. And that's sometimes difficult to measure. Uh, I today read a quote that you've got to zoom out to realize um, the progress you've made along the way. And sometimes just being involved in the day-to-day -day, um, workings, you're very you know, focused heads down on implementation. It's hard to know how much you've um, grown and learned as an engineer or whether in fact, you know, the things you're learning, are they relevant to the market, to other companies? Um, would it be something that sets you apart from other candidates when you interview for jobs? Or like, would this skill be something that can carry you forward to uh, contributing to um, code bases more effectively? I'll just say, you know, I think that that is actually, I think that's something that is good to think about, but also it's kind of like a double-edged sword. It's like, if you think too much about, is the code I'm writing right now going to contribute to what I'm doing long-term, you all of a sudden get stuck, right? Because you're like, okay, I want to go from mid to senior. And so I need to, let's say, um, learn whatever more, right? And, you know, I don't know what that means, right? But it's like, in order to be better, like to become a better engineer, and Rob, you can, you can, <laughs> you can hot take me if you like, but in order to become a better engineer, I feel like you need to do your job really well and do it better because the more you grow in your own, you know, job, right? The, just like the better engineer you're going to be, right? But if you don't, if you're like too focused on like, crap, I need to be on like, the hottest new project or whatever, instead of focusing on like what's going to get you promoted specifically at your job, then you're never going to move from your job specifically to get promoted. And you're actually less likely to have opportunities in that environment presented to you because they won't take you seriously for just chasing after like the thing that's not trying to get you promoted where you're at, if that makes sense. For sure. As developers, there's just one of the hardest things is to get rid of all the distractions because there's so yeah. many frameworks, technologies, you know, the it thing for the moment yeah. that um, there's really too much to learn. Um, so the focus think, on doing your job well in yeah. the moment, focus on delivery and making yeah. the best thing out of what you're doing does um, bring your focus into the present um, yeah. and leads to a healthier, more productive. Um, right. Thing. Like, don't get too distracted, right? Like, I think, I mean, that's the advice that I give certain people. And I think another thing is like, um, you know, if you're a JavaScript developer and you are doing JavaScript, like the difference that I find with most senior engineers is that like, they don't care what technology they're in. It's JavaScript they're good. You know, they can pick it up. Maybe they're not going to be the scene, you know, like maybe somebody going from React to Angular is going to be the most senior Angular person, but like they have the tools because they've just gotten good at JavaScript to do whatever they need to do. And that's been a big differentiator. I think it, when you're a mid, like you have a harder time switching from that transition, right? But again, the more years you have on your belt, like Rob said, like just the better you get at your craft period. Go ahead, Rob. <laughs> Um, you know, I, I think it's a good time here to put in my, I, I had a, a tweet on this a couple times that I've pulled out a few times, which is that my, my visualization of junior, mid and senior juniors are people that are trying to figure out how to do these are people that, so the, the perfect personification of a junior is somebody that looks at a ticket, sees that the ticket says it should behave exactly like this. They just make it do exactly that. They don't really care how it got done. They just, they got to get that outcome. A mid is somebody who knows how. And so these people know the patterns. They know the cool tech. They've read all the blogs. 
So they get you what's in the ticket, but they give it to you um, in a fancier way. <laughs> they thought about it. And then that senior is, is a gain in wisdom. So from junior to mid is a gain in knowledge. It's a gain in capability. The prototypical mid to me is somebody who, whose stuff is often described as over-engineered, too fancy, too smart. Then the senior, it's actually the wisdom, that gain in wisdom, that gain in knowledge. When are you not going to need something? When is that pattern overkill? When is it better to break the rules than to follow the rules? When is it, you know, how do you catch a requirements issue before it's even evident in what you're reading? How do you save time and money by catching those things, right? So you're making that transition. And so there's a few ways that I know of to do this, but it's not, I don't know all the ways. A lot of other people have a really cool ways that they've moved forward in their career. But to me, the best way to make that transition, if you're in the midst of that, is to start managing up respectfully. So what are some of the things that I was doing to do this? It is, hey, every morning, if you use Jira at work, make sure that as you're drinking your coffee in the morning, the first thing that you do is you look at all the tickets that were entered since yesterday. Do you understand why they're there? Who's working on them? You know, and what'll happen is after a couple of weeks of doing that, a couple of months of doing that, whenever something comes up in a offhanded conversation or in a standup, hey, there's this bug in this piece of functionality. I can't figure it out. You go, hey, you know, actually, so-and-so was just working on something like that. You should talk to them because they'll be able to hook you up. And suddenly they're like, that's, how did you know? That's really, thank you, right? And you start to be able to just know what's going on. And, and it takes very little time investment to do. The other one, and I'll, I won't give too many, but like the other major one that I would suggest is something that you can actually control is um, focus on fixing problems. Great. But never commit the solution once it's fixed. Never commit the solution until you know why it was the solution. And oftentimes this goes with, in parallel with the other suggestion, which is never start working on something until you know work needs to be done. These are surprisingly two things that seem obvious, but they're not. And any senior can tell you a story, I have a couple myself, of times when I was given a requirement to work on. And had you given it to a mid or a junior, they would have gone off and spent a month or so working on it and then gotten to the end and the whole team would have realized they built the wrong thing. And a senior will more often, not, not always, right? No, not perfect. But seniors will more likely look at something like that and say, oh, wait, this doesn't add up. Go to the team. Something doesn't add up here. Can we go through it? You go through it. You go, oh my God, what a miss on that requirements. Thank goodness that you spent two hours catching that and saved us two months of lost development time. You can end up paying your entire salary as a senior by catching like one of those mistakes. And if you're saving a company your entire salary in a week, um, they're going to feel a little bit happier about promoting you. <laughs> so you know, this is just a natural business response to doing some of this kind of stuff. I also really like, um, you know, one of our engineers here at this dot, he's always like, yeah, I did uh, 60 PRs last week. You know, I mean, probably not 60 PRs in one week by himself, but you get what I'm saying. He's like, oh, I've done a total of like 60 PRs and it's been so great. And I've gotten a lot of good feedback and whatever. And it's like, you know, for, for me as a manager hearing them, I'm like, that's really great. This guy's progressing. Awesome. You know, so a lot of it is just kind of that managing up because, you know, somebody tells me they do 60 PRs and then I go to the team and, you know, I'm like looking through and I look at somebody else who's his peer and I'm like, they did three PRs. Hmm. I need to talk to that other guy. Like, why is that other guy so much more productive than this other person? Right. But again, it's not like I was looking for that information as a manager. I was just given it. And then now I'm using it. And now I go to that person who gave me that information and I rely on that person more. For sure. And I feel that, um, you know, talking about your own accomplishments and successes, uh, it's almost a skill. And there's a Google workshop that's free of charge called um, I Am Remarkable. Um, it, it's specifically targeted towards uh, women and minorities. Um, it teaches them how to talk about your successes more because uh, promoting your own successes is a very important work skill and you're just sharing factual content so it's not like you're being boastful or anything but uh, it does come more naturally to some people than others and uh, in fact in interviews it seems that for a lot of senior roles they're also looking for a behavioral fit they're looking for confidence and 
you to be able to proactively reach out, like Rob said, to identify what should be done and what should not be done rather than just how it should be executed. Yeah, I think yeah, but it's another thing oh, it's is like it. women in tech, for example, we're always like, I think, I mean, I don't know if this is like a full woman in tech thing or like I find myself as an Asian female, for example, being like, oh, no big deal. You know, like, you know, in Asian culture, it's very like, oh, I made a dish. Oh, it wasn't that good. You know, <laughs> versus like, versus like, uh, what you should be doing is like, dude, I did this. It's amazing. And it's, it's like, it's hard, I think, uh, as a, as a woman to say that, right. To ask. And then sometimes even I feel like when I try to do that, then, uh, you know, it's like, it's, it's interesting because I actually do this with Rob a lot. When me and Rob are on call sometimes, I notice that if I say something, people are like, oh, she's being a little bitchy. Versus if Rob says it in his way, that's like, I don't know, why is it so different from when I say it? People are like, okay, cool. You know, but like they get emotional when I say something, you know, and I don't know. I mean, I think that's a, how do you solve that? <laughs> that's a hard one. So this is this is the politics, right? So yeah. from a position of privilege, one of the things that I like to do, especially from a, a, a leadership position, is I like to de-level. So I like to just say, I'm a software engineer. Now nowadays, because I because of my role, I, I play in in different circles, I make sure that I'm like I'm an architect, because I have to I have to chin up over a certain bar, right? But for most of the time, if people ask me, what do you do? You know, I don't go, I'm a senior software engineer for, right? Like I don't need that. I'm just a software engineer. But that said, I can do that because in a lot of circles, I'm all, I already have credibility. And I can fully understand that getting in and playing the politics, getting the, the correct title so that you can wield it is so much more important for all the women that I know in tech. Because if anybody sees a woman with junior next to her name, that comes with a whole bunch of assumptions. It shunts them off to certain roles hey, can you work on this feature, you know, not on the hard stuff, can you please go work on fixing this or doing the documentation or what have you. Do so, CSS. <laughs> yeah, no, so like, to that extent, I would never tell someone, don't worry about the title. That's why I say not don't worry about the title, but that the idea that you can progress to being a senior objectively on a different track from how you're progressing for career. And I say, yes, all that stuff about selling your successes, about being seen, about proving value, like actually showing like your bosses, I deliv I saved you $50,000 with that thing I did last week. Finding ways to quantify that and then pushing that, that is gonna help you immensely in your career, which is I think gonna help a lot along those lines. But some of the things that you can do to just be a senior, you can start to advance without the recognition. So it's two things you have to do simultaneously and. It, it's challenging for sure. In a lot of environments where there's not, you know, explicit leveling, for instance, at your own startup or um, at an organization that doesn't have a defined ladder, I think it's so important to go um, perhaps adhere to your framework of novice to mastery. And um, I want to be moving in that direction so that I'm gaining, you know, better skills and like awareness, recognition, Decision making, recollection. Code reviews. Um, Code reviews are a great way to do that. Spot patterns. Yeah. I think another thing is it's it's like, you know, Rob and I were having this conversation. It's like, you know, um, how do you tell somebody that is, you know, a mid level trying to advance to a senior, like just like just be a better developer, right? But I was consulting with one of my, uh, you know, one of my friends who's a director at another company and, you know, the way he puts it, right, when he's actually trying to level up juniors to mids is, look, I'm going to give you the things you need to know to be successful, you, you know, and it's up to that person to do that on their time. So like, you can do that and spend like your nights and weekends doing it and advance real quick. You know, you can go from junior to mid super fast, or you can, you know, it's, or, or it could take you like three years, 
right? And that is also up to the to the person, I think. Um, and I think asking uh, asking seniors as well. I did something when I was working corporate that kind of I don't know maybe raised a few eyebrows. Is <laughs> I went to all this. So this is a five thousand person. I was 5,000 or 8,000 person company, but I basically went to like all the technical architects. So there was five of them. And I was like, I'd really love to learn more about this storage air network thing. And I got them to spend like hours with me, literally just teaching me like stupid things. I mean, really just like, you know, and did I need to know, like I was a I was a support to renewal person. Like I wasn't doing anything related technical, but I was able to get there and get, get their time. Right. And, you know, I was able to progress in learning whatever the hell I wanted to learn. And that's a great way to do that. Um, you know, we have so many amazing people around us in open source. So even talking to some of these, like, you know, people that we admire so much kind of like within the open source community and, saying like, yeah, yeah, uh, like, I don't know, some people have the dream of being able to go to, um, what's that thing, what's the standards body called? Like, I forget right now, I don't know why, but. TC39 stuff. Yes, yeah, TC39, people, some people like really want to do TC39, right? So it's like, what do you need to do to advance to the level of, you can be in those TC39 meetings um, and you can learn from those and just be that, but. I mean, again, it's like interesting, right? Because it's like you advancing your career as a senior software engineer, there's always a question of, should it be directly correlated to your job or not? And I would say it's actually more beneficial for mids to align their career path to go to senior with their, like, with their path because you could like, be like let's say maybe christina you want to you want to be a svelte expert right if you're going to spend all your time becoming a svelte expert and put all your brain space on that versus like becoming a senior software engineer and doing you know whatever you do related to javascript at your job then you're not going to spend like that five minutes over coffee like rob said you're going to spend that five minutes thinking about svelte so you're going to go like mid svelte and then like slowly progress towards your senior thing versus if you just put all your eggs in one basket you will progress to senior but you will do that technically and you will do that in your actual career path but again could be a hot take <laughs> um so i do agree uh to, you know to some previous comments that um you know it's important to chart your own growth and not rely too much on external validation because who knows sometimes your manager just doesn't like you and uh, you're growing a lot but you know your value and your growth as an engineer has been great because you're working with some excellent people um i but at the same time i see that in uh some interviewing situations i have um quite a few girlfriends and uh, minority engineers they have had a few years of experience under their belt and they're trying to make a move to a similar size company. Yet the similar size company see that, oh, you know, their title doesn't say senior. So you're back to entry level again. Um, I would say that perhaps unconscious bias also plays into it and like delivery styles, um, the way you speak, or even the particular interviewer might have some um, assumptions, of, you know, there, uh, some people have implicit biases. Um, so I think for that to overcome uh, that type of discrimination, it is important to show some internal promotion, be rewarded at your workplace, um, as well as um, perhaps gain opportunities outside your workplace to get validation. Um, for instance, joining conferences as speakers or being uh, recognized in the open source community. Yeah, I totally agree that all of those things make a difference on your resume, but I think also like it doesn't hide, you know what I'm saying? It's like, if you're a mid and you have all these things, you're like, are you still a mid? Like, did you become a senior? You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's really good and it does help the resume a lot, but like... Is it going to get you to what you want? Or again, if you just talk about advancing from like, you know, novice to master, 
is all that side stuff getting you where you want to be actually technically right or is it distracting you from that goal to to advance to master there is something said about you know the uh, wisdom rob was referring to which you gain from experience or uh, um, messing up on certain tasks or just a lot of reflection on how you've been working. So um, I think you can, as much academic reading you can do, leak code problems, even um, you know systems design interviewing guides. There's a lot of them online. Uh, there has there is something to be said about gaining the actual experience doing it. Yeah, great points. Uh, by the way, I, I did say earlier that there was no real way to rush experience, and I, I'm only half correct when I say that. My number one advice for anybody is to get a mentor. And um, it's difficult to get one outside of your workplace often, but oftentimes you can, especially on Twitter. It's a great place to meet people, and, and sometimes they're willing to do mentorship. If they don't offer it at your job, I would recommend to people to either ask, like if they don't formally do it, to just ask somebody to see if they'll do it to you un unofficially. And if not, I'd probably recommend people to find a different job. Um, if you're not getting mentorship, A, they don't have their levels set up correctly <laughs> because they're, nobody is, is maturing the way that they should be. Everybody should have mentors and everybody should be mentoring. So that is a fast way because your mentor will give you, will open your eyes to the wisdom you're not realizing you're missing <laughs> um, and share with you your, their wisdom, which is not as good as getting firsthand knowledge, but it's it's good, it's useful. Um, it'll help people a lot. It can move you many years ahead in your career. Even if you're, even if you're gonna have to switch jobs to realize that, um, you're going to be learning a lot faster. The, um, the other thing which I, I agree with, it was the statement about your, your level. Yes, it's true. If, if you get handed a resume that says, I was a junior engineer and a junior engineer and a junior engineer, or it's the junior engineer, you're like, okay, well then I know where you are. You're either junior or mid. Um, if you get handed a resume that says I'm senior engineer, now, first of all, it is noticeable if someone is lying. If they just erase junior and they just replace it with senior, and then you read their bullet points, and it was like, I fixed bugs. I attended meetings and you're like, okay, you're not a senior. <laughs> um, but it's true that if it doesn't say that, so this is where one of those, I would probably never put that I was a junior engineer on my resume personally. I would just say I was a software engineer. Oh yeah, I tell um, them and when I review the resumes, like just take off the junior. It doesn't yeah. matter. Just say software engineer. You're a software engineer. And <laughs> you don't, don't have to put the actual title from your company. That. Yeah, like some, some women as well, they're like, oh yeah, you know, as a junior, it's like, Dude, just talk about what you do. Like, don't undersell yourself by just saying junior, even if you are. It's important. And that's why, like, yeah, I mean, you should get the highest level promotion you can. I mean, again, we joked about those people that were CTOs of a startup. If you don't think that it's useful that they can say in their bio, he's been the CTO, or he or she's been the CTO of this company. And, you know, that stuff does matter. If it didn't matter, people wouldn't pursue it. So nobody, don't believe anybody tells you that stuff doesn't matter, but it's, it's two dimensions of your journey at the same time. One is your title. One is your actual experience because there are people with the title, but no experience. And there are people with the experience, but no title. Both of those are the unfortunate ones. You want both, <laughs> ideally. Uh, and so they are two separate orthogonal, well, not orthogonal, I guess to some degree they go, they go together, but there's separate journeys. Um, and, uh, absolutely. I, I think it's really hard as well because it's like, you know, I mean, there's so many people out there that just like, it's different levels. I don't want to say there's people that like, don't know what they're doing. Right. But like, let's, let's take it back to when I was a CTO of, or sorry, sorry, not CTO. I was, co <laughs> I was co-founder of a startup, right? I was looking for a CTO. Like, you know, okay, well, guess what? The first person I found, you know, became the CTO of that startup. Was it right? No, <laughs> but like, whatever, you know, I needed somebody, right? So I think you also find that, right? There's a lot of people who will just be like, oh man, this person is great because they're solving problems and they get promoted or get those titles. Um, but, um, you know, it's, it's hard because sure you have the title, 
but you're not getting like that mentorship you need, right? That way to level up. You're, you're like in charge of everything. So it's your way versus like, you know, if you join, um, I, I don't know why we use Netflix as an example, but if you join Netflix as a software engineer, hopefully you learn a lot from the people that are around you who are like super, super senior, you know, they have some good people on their team if you're working on their team. Um, and then all of a sudden, you know, you go from like mid to senior, but you don't have like that, um, you don't, you, you don't have like that CTO title, you know? So it, it's, it's like a, and I'm not saying that, you know, it's, it's that black and white, but I mean, a lot of people are definitely making those, those choices and those decisions. I mean, we interview some people who are seniors and we're like, well, you're not really senior here, but we would love to hire you as a software engineer, you know? And, and, and I think one of the things people like here is that they do get to learn from people, right? Like they like the team and, you know, we're all about like learning and mentorship and whatever. So hard questions though, Christina, hard questions. I like your point about mentorship. Um, I feel that you know, more and more workplaces have explicit mentorship programs like my current one um, at PayPal too. And that has personally helped me tremendously. It's just less lonely being in the same situation at a company or like, you know, during COVID and so on, um, to have somebody who treaded the path before or can monitor your blind spots, point out weaknesses and like places. You oh yeah. At. But you um, also have to know when to not, you know, like when you like don't need your mentor. I was assigned a mentor at my first big company and she like after the second or third meeting, she like looked at me like, I have no idea what the hell to do with you. And we just stopped a meeting because she literally had no idea what to do with me, right? Like I wasn't following her, whatever her path, you know, whatever she thought my path should be. So, but yeah, like pairing with people, you know, I remember when I first started and I like wanted to learn random things, I would learn like things that I don't even need to know, you know, <laughs> like as a junior engineer. Um, but I had this knowledge. So like your knowledge kind of grows in different ways. You know, I remember Ben was like, you know, just getting used to like, you know, ES modules and stuff like that when it was coming out. And then he was like, oh, Tracy already knows that because I, that's the only thing I knew. I, you know, that's, I didn't know anything else. I didn't know what happened before. So I think as a, as a junior slash mid slash whatever, you know, you're going to become senior in certain areas, you know, than other people. And it, it's not like a, it's not like you check a bunch of tick boxes and then you all automatically become that person. Yeah. Um, I also like to point out that Tracy hosts an excellent uh, women's mentorship circle. Um, I think on a month to month basis. Yes. Yes. Every month we have women in tech. Here, I see. Yep. Um, and that has been a great way up to meet, uh, women at other companies who have done well. Yeah, it's hard to find like, um, it's, I mean, just because of our industry, like it's hard to find like senior engineers who are women who have paved that path, who also have time, right? These things are, these things are very hard. You know, it doesn't have to necessarily be a woman in tech, but I, I feel like there's so many like just amazing allies out there that can like really really help you just be there for you i mean it's it's so it's so amazing how welcoming our javascript community is yes and um as you said um sometimes you can just reach out randomly on twitter and peer with people you admire um, a lot of people involved in the open source community are very glad to share their wisdom and peer with you but it it does kind of suck that you have to do everything. It's like, I was thinking about what you said of like, oh, you have to be a speaker at this thing. And then you also have to like get better at your career and this and that. But you know, the best senior engineers I know, like the best senior engineers on our team, for example, are the people who are people who are like continuous learners, right? Like you see them doing a excellent job at their, at their work you know, and then you hear, which I don't see all the time, but you hear them like, oh, you know what? They're like actually leading the charge on this like really cool open source project, like the newest new stuff. And I'm like, man, you know, but they're constantly learning, constantly trying to figure out the newest thing. And that's what makes them so excellent at their jobs. Great. 
so that conversation went by very quickly. Um, and so we are, we are just about to conclude. But before we finish, I did want to say one more thing on this question about how do you progress to a senior engineer and also spoken from somebody, as Tracy mentioned, who does a lot of hiring, which is especially for women, but for realistically anybody out there, just go for it. The amount of times we have seen resumes from women where they are, they are uh, applying for a junior or mid-level position and I'm holding the resume and I'm going, Tracy, I don't understand this. They're a senior. I don't know why they're applying for a mid-level position. And the amount of times I've seen, you know, resumes from people and I'm like, okay, I appreciate that you applied for the engineering management role as a junior or a mid, but no thanks. I mean, you know, try to be reasonable, but realistically you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, Wayne Gretzky slash Michael Scott. And so, you know, this is, you just have to go for it. Yeah. Uh, no, it it's no, not gonna fix gonna all your problems, you. but you have, to, you have to try and you'll be surprised because when you're hiring those companies eventually have to pick one of the candidates. And if you're the best of the candidates they saw, you're gonna get that senior role. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, go for it is my, my suggestion. We see so many men go just going for it. Mm -hmm. And like, whatever, go for it. I mean, I admire them for just going for it, you know, like, why not? And, you know, another thing that like we tend to do, and, you know, I hope that more people do this. I'm, I'm, I, I hope that we're not the only ones that do this, but if I see, a, a, you know, a, a, a resume from an underrepresented person come in, I, uh, I look at it. I give them a chance. I give them the first pass. Maybe I even put them through the code exercise just so I can give them feedback you know, just because it's a good experience for them. And maybe they do excellent. And then, you know, amazing, right? Another thing is you see a lot of uh, people and they're like, why am I not qualified? Oh, whatever. And then they keep reaching out. And through the hiring cycle, you know, three months later, I'm like, you know what, maybe we should hire this person. You know, just because we've developed a rapport now and, you know, they fit another role. So like, you just never know. Well, that is where we will set it down for now. But, uh, you know, as we say, the conversation doesn't have to stop here. So thank you, everybody, for listening to this modern web podcast on the journey from being becoming a mid-level engineer to a senior engineer. Hopefully you learned a lot. Thank you so much to our guest, Christina. Uh, if you, yeah, if you want to reach out to Christina, um, you can find her on Twitter at Christina U123. So that's C-H-R-I-S-T-I-N-A-Y-U-123. Uh, you can find Tracy on Twitter at Lady Leet. So it's L-A-D-Y-L-E-E-T. And you can find me online at RoboCell. So for people that know my name, it's my name spelled slightly wrong, which is R-O-B-O-C-E-L-L. -L. As for the podcast, you can find us online at moderndotweb.com or on Twitter at modern.web. And thank you again to Kendo React to, for sponsoring this uh, podcast. So thank you, everybody. We will see you next time. Bye-bye.